Hello, moviegoers who want to sit back and watch a pleasant video for short while in these uncertain times. I hope you are well. Today we're going to talk about the 10 best science fiction movies released in the last 15 years, and I'm sure you're going to go crazy when you see some of them. Science fiction is a great genre, and it's movies in this genre that show the creativity of human beings and what they can do. I have a special interest in this genre, and lately when people talk about science fiction, the answer is Black Mirror. I love the show, but I assure you that there are many more sci-fi movies that will impress you when you watch them. By the way, I made the list according to my personal opinions, not according to IMDB scores. I would be very happy if you write your own list in the comments. By the way, I didn't count the Avengers movies as science fiction. I don't know why I made such a decision, but if I had done so, I could have counted all Marvel movies as a single movie and put them in sixth place. Since this is one of the most difficult lists I have ever made, I had to leave out many good movies. In 10th place is Looper. You live in 2074 and your job is to illegally kill people sent to you from the future, but one day they send you from the future, would you kill yourself? If not, what would you do to yourself? Looper is a very good science fiction movie with its dark atmosphere, well-directed and original screenplay. In ninth place we have EX Machina. This is both a science fiction and a psychological thriller that a young software developer is invited to an experiment by the founder of a large technology company. He goes to his huge house to participate in the experiment and sees that the founder of the company has developed an intelligent robot. Our man's task is to test the intelligence of this robot. Ex Machina does not move at a high pace like classic Hollywood movies and does not do a thousand tricks to keep the audience from getting bored. The atmosphere and the slow pace draw you into the action and you are always thinking about what will happen next. It's a movie with a great script and very good performances. In eighth place is Gravity. I saw the movie in the theater and I'm not sure if I would have felt the same way if I had seen it at home. It was one of the rare movies where 3D was used well and it was great to see this movie on the big screen where every frame looked incredible. Gravity is about two astronauts trying to survive in space after their ship is destroyed. I love movies that try to tell the story of a single event and make the audience feel all the tension of that event. Twitter aphorisms and unnecessary emotional plots often distract movies from the story they are focused on. Gravity is more of a thriller than a science fiction movie. In seventh place is The Martian, which almost everyone loves. The movie is about an astronaut who is accidentally left alone on Mars and tries to return to Earth using the means at his disposal. Marson is the author's first book and he actually calculated most of the mathematical stuff in the book. People who have read the book say that he probably got help from NASA. But the orbital calculations of the main character, an astronaut, are correct. Just knowing that the author calculated them himself makes an already good book even better. The Martian movie is as dynamic and entertaining as the book. There is a lot of tension and comedy in the movie. The pace never drops and the energy reaches the audience very well. The Martian is one of the best all-ages Hollywood movies of recent times. In sixth place, we have Tomorrow's Edge, which is good everywhere except the ending. I thought this movie would be a classic action sci-fi movie, Tom Cruise jumping around, beating people up, and the story would be good. But instead of being a hero, Tom Cruise plays a soldier who doesn't want to fight. In the movie, the world is at war with aliens and Tom Cruise is forced into this war. Our character can't do anything in the war and dies in five minutes, but instead of dying, 
He finds himself at the beginning of the day when he will go to war again. Even though he doesn't want to, he goes to war again and dies again. Throughout the movie, we watch our character die like a computer game. Our fifth movie is Interstellar. I don't think there's anyone who's watched this video who hasn't seen Interstellar, so I'm not going to tell you what the movie is about, and I think most people right now are thinking, if Interstellar is number five, what kind of stupid movies did this idiot put in the first four? I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe if I did this video tomorrow, I would put it at number one. Anyway... I'm talking about my top 10 favorite sci-fi movies and you can already tell that I love all the movies after the top 5 and I'm having a hard time ranking them. Interstellar is one of Christopher Noel's most majestic and emotional movies. The scene where our friends return to their ship from the planet where time flows relatively fast and they realize that everyone on Earth is getting old is spectacular. Matthews works wonders in the scene where the main character sees the messages his children send him as he ages. Normally Hollywood is afraid to go deep into science because they think people are stupid, but Christopher Noel tackles some very big issues in this movie. And he has worked for years with the great scientist Kip Torn. This great man wrote a book about the movie that everyone can understand. Fourth is her which is both science fiction and a love story. Starring Joaquin Phoenix, who has always been a great actor and thanks to the Joker, even the sidewalk on the street now knows him, the movie is about the near future. Technology has advanced, Siri-style apps and artificial intelligence can talk to humans. The movie is about a lonely man who falls in love with an operating system voiced by Scarlett Johnson. Obviously, her is not a movie for everyone. IT uses science fiction to tell the romantic and dramatic story of one person, and it doesn't always move fast. If you are not used to this kind of movie, you might get bored at times, but in the end, I think the pleasure you get will be very high compared to other movies. If you want to watch a movie that looks great, has depth, and has a character as layered as the Joker, her is a good choice. The third place is Inception. It's a very big and beautiful movie, and at times things don't make sense, but Hans Simmer's music keeps the pace up and keeps you from thinking about things that don't make sense. The world Christopher Noel created for Inception is very realistic and creative. After watching the movie, you wonder why no one has ever dealt with dreams in this way before. When you watch the movie, you feel like you are watching a real event. Probably no one in Hollywood could have managed to tell so many events in one movie and make the audience happy. Second place is Arrival. I love this movie that Arrival, like Interstellar, tackles a big subject. In doing so, it tells a more personal story set in a smaller region. Aliens are coming to Earth in different ships and our main character, a linguist, is sent to the ships to communicate with the aliens. In the movie, we watch the main character played by Amy Adams trying to understand the aliens that AT the end of the movie. There are some really mind-opening events about the importance of perspective. After a small event, we start to perceive the things we have been watching throughout the movie in a different way. It shows the fragility of life and the inevitability of death in a way that touches you. Probably 90% of the people watching the video will be surprised that Mad Max is in first place, but it is. Mad Max is my favorite sci-fi movie of the last 15 years. I didn't have high expectations before watching the movie, but after watching two hours of non-stop action and not getting bored in any way, I decided that I loved it incredibly. Mad Max doesn't have unnecessary characters and the classic emotional cliches used to connect people to the characters. Nowadays, action movies are hard to follow, 
Sometimes they are easy to follow, but after a while the action gets monotonous. Mad Max's action never gets boring. It's very easy to follow and very well shot. Some scenes are very chaotic, but the action is always in the same part of the frame and you don't even have to move your eyes. The music is also great, but if you watch this movie at home and not in the theater, you may not get the same pleasure. Yes, friends, we have come to the end of another video. Friends, I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel and like my video. Hope to see you in other videos.